Ladies, gentlemen and others, today we have with us Tanvi Geeta Ravi Shankar. She's a fashion influencer who creates some amazing content in the space of beauty and lifestyle as well and is a huge advocate for ending weight-related stigmas in society. She goes by the Chubby Twirl on Instagram and is also one Cosmopolitan's Body Love Influencer 2022. Tanvi, thank you so much for being such a shining example of what it means to embrace your body and empower others to do the same. Thank you for making the time for this podcast. Thank you so much, Anam, for having me. You know, I've been following your content for a while. I feel like I discovered you somewhere around the pandemic. Okay. But what made me so happy in recent times was seeing your recreation of Besharam Rang. Thank you. That to me was just oh my god! She has absolutely. killed it you even recreated dipika's like bikini and everything and did i read correctly in your brood interview it was your husband that shot the entire yes, video yes yes it was a very like very random shoot that we did and i didn't realize that it could garner so much attention no but how did tell us a little bit about like how it came about cuz i think that it did not look like it was random first of all it looked like it had been thought out cuz obviously you had your look in place you knew all your steps and i could not take my eyes off you with that thank reel. you i never thought that it would blow up like the way it did i had the bikini and i just had to get the blue sarong so i was like we were just sitting we were chilling in the room and i was like listen i really love the song and i think i can do the steps also so why don't we just go and shoot it tomorrow morning and that's how it happened did you shoot it like close by in bombay no no in bombay yes in mud but yeah so woke up at 3 in the morning then got ready and left at like 5 5:30 that's awesome i have to admit when you first posted it i clearly missed it algorithm me i don't know what it was but when i saw brood feature you and i saw your interview there i was like oh my god wait how did i miss it so then i went and saw it on your profile and i was like dude like this could not have been recreated in a better way and then what i think was the cherry on the cake was dipika shared your reel on the yeah. stories a few days ago <laughs> yes there's a lot of love that it has got but it also has got a lot of hate so which is obvious but it's it's the basic like the hate i mean there's nothing new it's something that i've been getting since 2016 when i started my blog so it's the same thing that oh this is unhealthy you're promoting obesity whereas it's just someone a fat girl who's dancing but still people look beyond that and all they care about is shaming the person and uh, i think at the end of it for people it's just like we are so it's it's a projection of their insecurity is right they're like we are so unhappy with our bodies we are trying so much how can this girl be happy how is she dancing so good so yeah but i focus on the positives and the positives are amazing i mean dipika liked the video dipika reshared the video so what else does a girl need no that's amazing and i'm so happy for that recognition coming your way because i felt like it was overdue i think that your general content also is so fab Thank i you. feel like what you do is like just normalize so many different things i remember seeing this post on your feed when you talked about how plus size bodies also have specific tips you were giving on how you travel differently yeah. or how you keep certain things in mind yeah. but then when people come at you like you said that there is that <clears throat> hate in whatever proportion and they try to shame you what's your like go to way of managing it because I know you're strong today and I'm sure it must have been a journey yeah. to come to where yeah. you are. But somewhere I mean is it is it weird to want to fight back with these people and like if they're saying weird things to you to want to say hello you are the weird person not me. Yeah, I I I tend to do that but only when I'm in a good space. Um when I'm you know say because obviously there's so much happen happening in our personal lives also no so if that particular day i am having a bad day then i never engage with trolls or these comments only when i'm in a great space that's when i give really sa- sassy and sarcastic replies and i love that in fact uh, this one person he wrote on my video saying that uh, you're one chocolate away from death and i made a video about it you one chocolate away, away. from yeah death. so i made a video saying that this is my second <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so when i'm in a good mood this is what i do but when i'm in a bad mood i never engage no but that's listen first of all kudos to you for being able to give it back that way because i think that if you are not as strong like just strong will yeah. and strong minded these internet trolls can really yes. take a toll uh, on mental health but 
what was it like at the start like for example this is where you are now yeah. right the reason i'm asking you this and i'm kind of asking you to think back of that yeah. time which probably wasn't a great time yes. right is because there could be some people who are listening who are there now yeah. what does one do in a situation where people are poking and prodding and probably what is a big insecurity what is something that you're trying to get over and be like this is who i am actually the thing that has always bothered me like none of these comments even when i started out in fact they never bothered me in the sense that they they never triggered my insecurity because my body has never been an insecurity i didn't start my journey to find body positivity i found body positivity and then i started my blogging journey i was never insecure but the thing that always and it it still gets to me is i'm like how can someone be so unkind and how do they not know basics of like like how does a 17 year old have the guts to come and teach me about health and fitness you don't know anything go do your homework <laughs> like you literally don't know anything so this is what upsets me and it always used to upset me back then and they would obviously get personal talk about my husband talk about our relationship and stuff like that when i started out obviously I, it would really get to me and i would take like these really long uh, social media breaks after that to you know sort of let that die down because when it starts then at least a week people are trolling all my old videos also and it is something that i've seen a lot of plus size content creators go through they and anybody who's see we uh, apart from being content creators we are essentially activists also so anybody who's in that space gets a lot of hate so i used to just allow it to die down and obviously i would have my support system at home even now there are times when you know it really gets to me because i'm human but i'm much better equipped now to handle all of that can i just say first of all it's beautiful that you said you already had your body positivity and that you've never been insecure of your body because i would assume that the trolls and the people who are coming at you that probably don't even follow your page but come to you know drop little nuggets of what they think is wisdom that in itself is just amazing that you know you don't give a shit that's awesome so more power to you on that but you said something that has my has got my attention they come at your husband what is like where what, where do you go with that so obviously my husband seems to be much fitter than i am right i mean even for, forget trolls even relatives and friends they when they see us they like oh tanvi so lucky she's got tushar because he's fit people just see a relationship from that point of view if a guy is dark and the girl is fair they're like ladka kitna kala hai or if the girl is darker than the guy ladki kitni kali hai ladki kitni moti hai ladka kitna fit hai so people's view about relationships are that only you know or height difference they talk about that also a girl can't be taller than their than her boyfriend mm. so such things you know they they comment about how probably you know i'm filthy rich that's why he married me and i'm like okay can i give you company on that particular one because i get that a lot and my husband and i are 11 years apart yeah and because we're 11 years apart and i look my age and he looks his age i got i still get you know yeah. a lot of oh my god she married him for the money i was like Okay, you can make your own little <laughs> yeah. narratives. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. My husband and I have a running joke going on at home. I was like, the next time, like for example, the last time I got this comment, I was like, "Babe, we've been married for six years now. It's high time I see this money that yeah. people are talking about. <laughs> Where's the money? Yeah. <laughs> Where? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> It's just become a joke yeah. at this point. Where I'm like, what do we do now? Yeah. Where do we go from here? But I want to go into your creator life a little bit because you said something very interesting, and I think that a lot of people don't realize how hard creators work. So I want to quickly circle to you saying you woke up at three a.m. for yes. that shoot, right? Yes. Now I can relate to that because when you want to get that sunrise shot, you don't want the light to be too harsh. Yeah. Plus, you got to get up in the morning and do makeup and hair, mm -hmm. um, and then reach the location. Listen to anybody who is. not in the influencer world this can all sound like first world problems but this is our career and so it is part of our regular life tell me a little bit more about that because i feel like it'll be really interesting for people to hear that very erratic if that's the word to use 
side of our lives where we if you need to get content you've got to just go all the you know the whole the whole nine yards to yeah, make it happen yeah yeah i think i think creators uh, a this is our business right this is people think oh it's as easy as i mean even so many brands when they approach us they're like oh it's just one story just like you know shoot it it won't take more than 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I will take 2 hours first to get ready for that 15 minute story and then I have to script it and then I will take many many takes to do that so it's not a 15 minute thing so I think um, just like how initially when uh, you know movies came about and actors were there I think even now people from small towns they don't really understand what goes into being an actor being a movie star and i think even with content creation it's the same thing we're still very new it's a very new field right people don't understand people think oh it's so easy like i get comments and i get comments from so many people saying that you know even i feel i can also start doing the same thing so kar lo yeah i say the same thing i'm like you must you absolutely should What is the stupidest thing a brand has said to you? Like this 15 minute thing yeah, is also yeah. quite yeah, stupid. Yeah, it's very stupid. But I'm sure there's stuff that's like even more stupid. No, just uh, I think uh, the fact that brands themselves not all obviously, but so many brands don't understand what goes into like you want us to uh, script, conceptualize, direct, do product shoots also. Like we're doing we're making an ad. Edit. Edit. everything and we are performing also and then marketing that thing everything we are doing and still you know you think that it's so easy and uh, i still remember this one particular brand they had sent me a wrong product okay and i finished shooting and i left a b i left for my trip and i was like now i'm not in india i can't reshoot it and you sent me a wrong product this product i won't even find in bali what do i do so they they were like i was like you can do one thing if you can just take like a normal video of the product zoom in zoom out that's all you need to do they couldn't do that they were like they sent me some video and it was so bad i was like i can't add this in my video i'm sorry and that in itself shows that how difficult our job is and i i i think that so many people make light of what we yeah, do yeah yeah uh, do you remember before the pandemic where there were no reels and our content was only pictures so that time all we like we had to wake up at 3 in the morning and go and get that sunlight that's when our day started every day like now we can do it whenever we want during the day but yeah what do you think of like reels and the way the you know industry has changed post pandemic because i feel like a there's been a lot more there's been an influx of more yeah. creators yes. uh, i love that reels has enabled everyone to be able to edit on the go on your phone without using third party you know apps per yeah. se um where are you at with this and how do you feel the evolution of the creator industry is basically gone to for us i think um, it's great because it's a different and a new way of expressing ourselves but i just feel that obviously over time they need to regularize how you know they monetize it and all of that better because the views and the kind of uh, engagement that some videos get it's crazy and it's just like it will be a video of a girl just flipping her hair in slow mo and it has like 15 million <laughs> likes and i'm like what is this to and we we put in so much work right for that one video and that will have like just like 3000 likes or something like that so i just uh, hope it gets regularized but it's a great way of you know just basically expressing yourself and like even for a common man But you feel like, for example, like you said, किसी की जुल्फे ले रहा रही हैं इतने you know million views likes है. You feel like there is an audience for everything. Maybe that's why are we over intellectualizing our own content? Maybe because this is something I ask myself very often. I said, yeah, I want every video to have a takeaway, and I want this, and I want that, and I know that I I suffer from over analyzing yeah, things in yeah. general. So like, are we are we over intellectualizing the fact that we want everything to be? Because in my head, that Zulfe Lehraria reel that you are now describing is what I would call a filler post. Yeah, like I don't know what to post today. I have this picture of mine, this video of yeah. mine, beauty yeah. shot from the yeah. other other day. Yeah, take a trending audio and dal do. Yeah, but that for me is a fill absolute filler level yes. post where there was no thought, no strategy. I just didn't want the algorithm for hating me for not <laughs> posting something today, so I posted it. Where are you on that? Should we stop? overthinking our content 
I mean, uh, I don't know. I I I don't think uh, I still have an answer to that because uh, I will not lie. Even I have succumbed to that many a times for the views and the likes. And we all to, have. Yeah. Don't feel guilty. Yeah, but. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I I think we should have like if you are calling yourself a content creator, you should have a balance of both. Mm-hmm. There are pages where it's just dulfe lehrate hoy videos. <laughs> so, but they they still are getting the numbers. So I think. But are they getting the brand sponsorship? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. As long as that is regularized. Yeah. And uh, brands know that it's not not just numbers. because right now i feel a lot of brands don't know that really yeah i'm not talking about like the cream uh, big brands and all but yes maybe i live in a little optimistic bubble but i like to think that compared to like let's say pre pandemic brands are realizing where their roi is truly coming from because see virality started a few years ago in general but in the pandemic it really like there were so many creators that came to the fore yeah. because their content went viral yeah. and only very few of them have managed to truly sustain and turn it into a career i've obviously always respected you as a creator in general but i think my respect went up for you so much more when you came for one of my events a couple of months ago i was hosting an event for a fashion brand here in bombay and one of the first things you asked me was hey okay but what size do they sell up to and i was like it feels so good because this means you're not just talking about about it for social media and cuz it sounds cool or because okay you happen to be plus size but you are truly passionate that everybody gets the same access as you yes. and i think for me my respect went up for you so much that day and i remember introducing you to the founder of the brand and they said that they were going to try to you know do what they can and in my head even i made a note that the next time i'm hosting an event i'm going to ask this question first cuz just because it may not necessarily apply to me yeah. doesn't mean it couldn't benefit someone else. Else. so you really like you know kind of shone light on it in a new way to me that day plus yeah. size is basically your it's plus right it's an extension of your straight sizes your straight sizes that have been always available from your xs to your xl this is straight size anything above this is your plus size so 2xl onwards is 2xl onwards and that should go up to a minimum of 7xl and how many do you do you see in the market today people pass off xl as plus size and they stop at 2xl these are brands that promote themselves as plus size brands they start at an l and they give an xl and a 2xl they that, they stop at 2xl Initially, obviously, I was very like polite, and I used to be like, "No, y'all don't have my size. Y'all don't carry your size, my size." And then the conversation would end there. Nowadays, I say, "I, I, I'm like, reach out to me when you're actually inclusive." You mean they will offer you a sample size, but do yeah. not carry the five X to the store. Yeah. So many brands otherwise have told me that you know we'll custom make it for you, so that you can do this campaign. So I'm like, but then will my audience have the access to these sizes? They're like, no. Oh my god! Yeah, that is such a load yeah. of bullshit. Yeah. So it's 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 tokenism at its best everywhere. Like even if you see our plus size models in India, they're all a size L. You won't find an actual plus size model in India. Even on the runways, I mean, I feel like there'll be that one. Yeah. You know, maybe L XL. I mean, I genuinely you yeah. can't tell yeah. when you're looking at anyone. Yeah. But there'll be that one plus size model, mid size. Who's plus also size. not plus size? I mean, now there's a new term which actually has always been just straight size. Your XS to XL is straight size, but now these sizes, M, L, and XL are called mid sizes. So now suddenly, all these previously former plus size models, finally they're at least calling themselves mid size. they're not plus size but there's no plus size representation at all even though it's been so the movement actually started in 2016 in india when uh, you know lakme fashion week did its first uh, plus size fashion show that was the first and only last inclusive fashion show where they had taken actual plus size bodies but wouldn't you say mid size is a starting of that representation okay maybe like this is a place to start at no, would be no actually because it still doesn't solve the problem because mid size has always been available mid size clothes 
have always been available mid size bodies have always got representation mid size bodies don't have the kind of discrimination that plus size bodies have because they those bodies are considered as slightly chubby or just ye yeah. so they don't get that much hate also so it's so many things you know it's not just clothes it's layered so if you don't talk about or if you don't represent plus size bodies then you're leaving the entire community because of which the body positive movement started in the first place so i feel like it's so interesting to hear it from you because as somebody so i grew up very skinny very very skinny i used to i used to weigh 38 kilos for most of my life and then i think it was about the age of 24 25 that i started gaining weight and i realized that we have such a khud ka hi sense of our own body where i think i got more conscious of my body once i you know started gaining weight because in yeah. my head it seemed like oh this is a big change from where i was and i became very conscious yeah. and then once you are married and you start gaining weight the comments about oh my god she's pregnant yeah. they're right there and i think i get about what i'm looking at my team as i ask is two reminders a month about i'm not pregnant and you keep poking it in my face um how do you deal with that do you also get the pregnancy bullshit yeah, sent yeah. away especially because and i've always got it because i am an like obviously if you talk about shapes body shapes i am an apple shape right so i carry most of my weight on my tummy even at my thinnest i had a paunch so i've always that's that's my body shape So obviously before marriage nobody used to like only friends would you know joke about it oh tanvi you look pregnant but after marriage even your relatives and all start asking about all of this plus i had this really bad car accident so because of which i'm a, i'm disabled so i walk a certain way so now you're walking a certain way and also you're carrying your weight on your stomach so people the first thing they assume is she's pregnant so uh, they asked my mom my mom actually had given a very good answer once we had gone for a wedding in bangalore and these aunties were like tanvi good news ah huh? like is she going to give us a good news so my mom was like yeah she has lots of good news to give she won an award this year her blog is doing so well she gets so much love and recognition so yeah i don't know if i'm going to cry okay That's, can I just say that's awesome that your mom said that for you, yeah. and it is so ridiculous that I think we as women are subjected to these questions. Yeah. I don't think, and uh, I'm usually a little bit conscious of using the word fat, but you used it earlier, so yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. because fat, fat has this almost like yes. bad analogy, yeah. and I. It's in my head, a it's a description. Yeah. yeah, in my head, it's a description. Fat men. would not i mean forget the pregnancy questions yeah. i don't think they would also get the same kind of pressure okay. to look and feel fit they don't but i will say this that men have a different kind of pressure they have a pressure to um, do well in their career that pressure is not there on women so it's it, that you know patriarchy has is problematic for all of us i find it a little bit difficult to sympathize with that if i'm being perfectly <laughs> yeah, yeah, candid know, over here because uh, while men may feel the patriarchal pressure of running a household and doing well as as you know we are called modern women i'm you know using my quotes yeah, yeah, for those yeah. who can't obviously see us right now um because we're called modern women we're also given the pressure of you take care of the house and when you become mums you do well and you kill it at the job and and you be a good daughter friend and have social circle and so i find it a little bit difficult to sympathize <laughs> with the men if i'm being perfectly yeah, yeah. honest no absolutely absolutely the pressure definitely is much more on women obviously on men it's just the career right and taking care of their family financially we have to do everything we and like even when you know on women's day and mothers day when they talk about women it's like my wife can do this and this i'm like no she doesn't need to do all this help her yeah <laughs> i loved that load what was it share the load campaign yeah. that i think was it ariel that did yeah, it a few yeah. years ago which i thought was fantastic and i think it did hopefully make a lot of people think i hope yeah i'm like you know women are super women because they have to be they probably don't want to be yeah. have you considered that for a second yeah. so you know that's 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 a that's probably why i also find it a little bit difficult to sympathize <laughs> with men over there I actually did want to ask you about why you had disabled in your bio. Um you said something about 
yeah. walking differently is that something you're comfortable sharing yes yes absolutely so in uh, 2014 my husband and i that time we were dating uh, we had a very bad car accident where the car completely flipped and all so nothing uh, like outwardly happened to us but both our spines got affected really badly my spine's broken so i have a broken spine and uh, there's nothing i can do about it and my husband's lost like two discs because of that in his spine so he's much better than me but i mean with age of a serial deteriorate and i can't stand for more than like 2 minutes that's the maximum i can stand after that like i'm in crippling pain how do you shoot with i i i do my i do like one shot and then i have to sit down for 5 10 minutes then again i stretch and all and then again i do another shot Tanvi, you're a fucking superhero. How are you doing this? The doctor, in fact, told me that so because my spine is broken. Where it's broken, my uh, right legs, the main nerve that operates the right leg, is partially uh, paralyzed. So the doctor said that you need to, for now, forever, be like completely on bed rest, so that it doesn't get worse. It will lead to like full paralysis if you keep putting pressure on it. but i was obviously like there's no point in living if i don't get to dance there's no point let's see i think my respect just went up for you like tenfold <laughs> first of all i'm really sorry you went through this yeah. because nobody should go through a health yeah. issue like that and then a job like ours has so much to do with being on your feet and especially when you're shooting i feel like with beauty content you can still get away with you know sitting, sitting and filming yeah. so much of it but with fashion content and you love to dance like you said i feel like i'm seeing like i'm literally i have reels going through in my head right now from your page and i'm like wait how did you film any of that so is is this something that you talk about on your page is this something um, that you've shared i have i have not very regularly not mu- as much as my fashion and body positive content but i do talk about it so then would it be fair from an inclusivity point to think that you're not just out there taking a stand for inclusivity from the point of view of size it's also to do with yes. people who are differently yeah. abled yeah. and you know you yeah. you have so much more to say because you have these lived experiences i do talk about that also because uh, a lot of uh, times you see that people who are disabled they uh, don't get that kind of respect that they should they are considered lesser than in some way in a very like i can't even explain it in a very different way so yes i do talk about it but i don't talk very actively about it because whenever i have again i've got those same uh, trolls and hate uh, comments saying that she's disabled because she's fat no yeah. stop if she loses weight she won't be disabled yeah i've got these comments and i get them a lot I had a very close friend growing up um who was I mean she was on the chubby side I don't think she would qualify as plus size with the definition that you yeah, told us today yeah. that it's 2XL yeah. and up not at that time at least and I remember her mum would and again I'm not blaming her mum or anything because I think that we're all conditioned yes. to think a certain way her mum would always tell her um lose weight lose weight lose weight and I remember that when we had just like i think we were in the 10th standard or something or was it the 10th or the 11th standard so i was like 16 years old maybe i remember really getting on her case and i never cared before that but because we had i think yeah we had just started college and i remember really getting on her case to lose weight because i said your mom's telling you and i'm with your mom and i remember just like when every time i think back at it i feel so guilty about it because it must have messed with her head it's just one of those things right when you yeah. look back you're like yeah. she wanted to lose weight i should have just let her lose yeah. the weight when she wanted to but i shouldn't have jumped and it makes every time i'm telling you every time something like this comes up i'm like you know what that is the probably the single regret i have in my life Welcome to my personal favorite segment slide into my DMs. This is where I take a peek into my guests DMs and yes, I'll be sharing mine too. In this no holds barred segment, we nose dive into our guests inboxes as well as messages from you to us from my Instagram. Buckle up for a potentially scandalous round of messages and some sweet ones too. Let's go. 
So one of the things we do a lot in the creator space is look at metrics, right? Whether it's ROI to a client, whether it's follower growth, engagement. My God, we're hounded with numbers, aren't we? How do you measure your, like, what is your metric for stating that, okay, I feel like things got better this month or this year? Did I, Did you get lesser negative comments or lesser trolls in this month how do you measure that okay this month i convinced so many more people that they they need to let go about the idea of being obsessed with their weight whether weight or inches or whatever i think it's through the comments and the dms that i get that's how i measure it um i obviously know the regular ones who've been with me since when i started or since years and they regularly comment but the new ones who join and then they give me this like paragraphs of comments and they tell me how you know my work has impacted them how this particular video made them come out of their shell and you know wear a bikini uh, for the first time on the beach so stuff like this that's how i measure my growth and uh, apart from that obviously i mean the follower count the numbers that really matters for brands so yeah do you consider yourself a blocker are you a are you a blocker what's a blocker I like don't know you know what... when you get like negative comments do you just reply to them and leave it there or do you just go like on a no no i list? restrict i'm like you keep commenting now for the rest of your life you will think that you're commenting and you're leaving all these nasty comments on my videos but i can't see it so it's not affecting me and i'm getting the engagement So I you. love it. I should do this now. Yeah. I'm a serial blocker. No, no. So, so if you block, then the engagement also goes, na. Let them comment. Sometimes I also pin the negative comments. That also gets so it me. gets more people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love how you're thinking of engagement while responding <laughs> yeah. to these people. See, because they they want the attention. So some that's the only thing they crave for. They don't care about my health. They don't care about anything. They just want attention. They are seeing a easy target. Okay, a fat ladki hai, isko troll karta hai. So I'm like, here take the attention. And then they only like delete the comment because they get so much of hate on that comment. I like this strategy. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use it and I'll credit you at the chubby twirler yeah. right there. Thanks to you. Um, but like what, at what point in your career, because you've been making content for a few years yeah. now. Um, at what point did you think, okay, you know what? I've made it. This is me. This is, I found my sweet spot. I've I arrived. I think not it. yet. I've not reached that space yet. Really be honest with us. It's just no, you no. and me. Nobody's listening. <laughs> no, no, no. Honestly, I still feel that... Uh, that as i said the the work that i'm doing the representation that i need is still not there like we don't as i said we don't have basics still what do you think is like when do you a when do you think we'll get there b do you think it's going to happen anytime soon in that case i mean it, it totally depends on brands and media houses right i really want the problem is everybody is just like aping the west and jumping onto the bandwagon they don't really know anything about the movement they don't care but i'm like care because it's a huge community which has money they will pay you for the clothes so a make clothes our sizes and b have representation no in like fashion everywhere else so that is still not there so that is why i still feel that there's a lot of work that i'm yet to do the day i see someone my size or bigger than me on a magazine cover i'll be like okay the job's done do you do you know this it's like that beauty equivalent of people saying oh nobody is buying the darker foundations are par hai hi nahi to kaise kharidenge exactly uh, do you then also have like problems with indian designers sourcing issues you yeah, know because yeah. at the end of the day then they're not yeah. going to keep sample sizes only mm. so sample sizes though i think they won't even fit a mid size person hmm. so that i don't is, fit into sample sizes yeah, for yeah, example yeah so I'm that's a, a different I'm a, I I shuffle between being a UK size ten to twelve. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. when I'm bloated, fourteen. Yeah. So you won't get sample sizes too. So that's a different uh, battle altogether. But do But you feel like Indian designers are willing to custom make for you when it's when it's you know when you're going to be featuring them and covering yes. them? Yes. That, yes. That, yeah. We're open to that. But I'm saying that that was always available. 
Indian designers were always there to customize things for our size. Obviously, when we paid them a little more and all of that. No, I don't mean paid at all. I mean for yeah, example, yeah, even as a content creator, yeah, yeah, like for credits, because like for yeah. example, today when a magazine goes to a brand and takes things on credits, yeah. uh, or when somebody that does fit into sample yeah. sizes takes things on credit basis and returns it, which is what we yeah, call sourcing. Yeah, that is something that I don't have the privilege. They still wouldn't no, do it on no, a custom basis. No. But they, you know, just if you're if you're listening and you're from a brand, I want to tell you that there are people who would like to know what brands are actually making the bigger sizes. So if they did that, it would basically be almost free publicity for them <laughs> to agree to do these because yeah. they clearly aren't including the size in the no. campaigns. You yeah. may as well get other content out of it yeah. from different ways. Just at least as a business move, if not. An ethical one. Yeah, I I mean that's what I said. There's a huge community of people who are willing to pay money, just cater to them, no. But as I said, like we still don't have the basics. Like today, for some shoot, I need a white T-shirt. The brand says you need to be in a white T-shirt, which is so basic. I will step out. I will not find a single store which has a basic white T-shirt. Then what do you do? That's why. That so. A lot of times, people, uh, you know, come at me saying that you are promoting H and M and you are promoting these fast fashion brands. I'm like, first of all, a plus size person. If we see a white T-shirt in H and M, that is the first and last time we are going to get a white T-shirt. So yes, I will hoard. I will have that and I will keep it in my cupboard because tomorrow, someday, I need a white T-shirt. That is the only one I will have, and which is true. Like we don't have basics. We don't have lingerie here. I have to get my lingerie shipped from the US. I've actually heard this a lot. We don't have lingerie here. I have a I have a friend who is large busted, and uh, yeah, I remember her telling me that I literally only and only buy my lingerie outside of India, which is such a basic, right? But I mean, see, you're someone with privilege who can do that. What exactly. happens to everybody else who doesn't I, have that yeah. privilege? That is why then it's it's a cycle, right? Then they're like, oh, fat people don't dress well. I'm like, because they don't have the access. They don't have the access to these clothes. It's a vicious circle. Yeah. Is there any moment from your journey as a career, as someone who has clearly advocated for body positivity through and through, is there any particular moment that stands out to you in the best possible way? I mean, you could share a worst possible way also, but is there something specific that makes you feel okay? You know what? I am. This is good. Like, like I'm. I'm not just on the right track. There is actual impact out there that I'm seeing through my content and through my communication. I think it's these uh, stories that I get to hear from my uh, audience. What you know about how they've come uh, got over barriers in their head. Like I always say this this one story because it touched me so much. This it was this forty five year old lady who on a video of mine said that I'm forty five years old. I have two kids who are you know one is graduating now. And till date, whenever we've gone on a picnic or a family outing or with friends, I have never even been near the pool because I'm so conscious. And now this 45 year old, because of you, is buying her first swimsuit and is going to wear it on her next vacation. Oh my god, that is so nice, dude! Something that basic. Yeah. Something that yeah, basic that is basic. how deeply rooted we are making someone insecure about when you're like yeah. poking and prodding, and you are strong. I mean, you're I mean, yeah. like, that's established. Yeah. But for somebody out there who may not yeah. be, and oh my god, and it's not just fat people. Like I've seen it with all my thin, straight-sized friends. They are so like it's this thing that you need to look like a model to just wear something as basic as a swimsuit. Which I always say is the uniform for the pool. That's it. Like how you wear probably a salwar kameez when you're going to a temple. This is the uniform for the pool. I just think it needs to be taken off social norms where you people need to stop commenting on anybody's yeah. weight. Yeah. Stop commenting on weight and body, yeah. and we'll all just be happier and more yeah. confident that as will a society. Take so long, you know, because I see like so many people around me who. Who know what body positivity is? They know what I talk about. Still, as soon as they meet each other, the first thing is you've put on weight. You've lost weight. That's the first comment. So I think this comment on people's bodies and the opinions and judgments on people's bodies—that's going to take a while. But I'm here. 
till then to fight i love that i absolutely love that hi guys it's your girl anam c and welcome to my podcast the real deal with anam c this is the podcast where i sit down with some of the most talented creators and influencers in the industry and ask them to spill their secrets share hilarious anecdotes and get into the inside scoop of this and so many other industries you'd want to know about so get your favorite snack start driving prep for your cardio time or just stare at a wall as i bring you the real deal on the people who are making the entertainment world what it is today drum rolls please so it's time for our next segment associate this a fast paced word association game where my guests get no more than 10 seconds to respond so get ready get set associate listen to end on a fun note after i've cried and we've had some very deep conversations here we do this game okay. i do this game with my guests called word association okay. and um you kind of have to be a little bit fast so think of like sure. think of like rapid fire karan johar coffee with karan but it's a word and you're throwing a word back at me really fast the only thing we're taking this is the kuch kuch hota hai i think What kuch kuch hota hai thing? Coffee with Karan. I know on in kuch kuch. The Neelam show. Yes. Oh my God! You reminded me <laughs> yeah. of a whole new thing. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna rebrand this segment as the Neelam show from now. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a few words at you, and I just want you to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Talent. Okay. Me. Stereotypes. Break them. Self love. Everybody should have it. social media um fun face tune also fun but not needed the pick up adukun love do you love her more now more than you did before she shared the story be honest yeah uh, see yeah i can see it on your face <laughs> yeah, just say yeah, yeah. <laughs> high waist jeans amazing and low waist jeans hate hate <laughs> acceptance um again everybody should have it i don't know and i can't think of anything else with that thank you so much for taking the time out and coming on my pod you've been an absolutely fantastic guest of the real deal with anam c thank you and thank I'm you for so having me i'm so grateful for having had this conversation with you same here